everyone and thanks so much for stopping back by the channel today I'm gonna to give you that long-awaited weatherization video for the hen house and I hope that this answers some of your questions I have been getting a lot of questions about how do I keep my chickens warm in the winter time and this video is going to do that for you now I am standing in the coop and my coop is an 8x10 hip roof style barn and it is one of those coops that sheds that you might get at Lowe's or Home Depot. It was here when I got here and it was formerly used as a horse pen. Now I've already showed you some of the aspects of the coop so you kind of know how it's set up on the inside. And today I'm going to show you what I do to help insulate it and keep it warm uh, to protect my chickens. Now um, I'm already going to let you know that I do not use a heat lamp. And if you would like to know more about that or have me do a video specific about heat lamps, comment down below and let me know. Um, also, if your coop is different, and I know there is so many different styles of coops, some that you've built, some that you've bought, uh, the little ones from TSC or some that you've ordered from another company, those are all great and you can always modify some of the things that I do in my coop to fit your specific needs. So with all that said, let's get started. Well, let's get started with the outside of the run first. Now, we recently built a run this uh, late summer. We had a lot of predator issues and so we finally built a run for the chickens to stay in and stay safe. This um, is not yet completed. We still have some work to do. And the material that we ordered is on back order. So we just went ahead and used some tarps that we had on hand. And we've put them over as much area as possible. And we've concentrated on the area that the wind comes from. Previous years, we have put uh, straw around the bottom of the coop. Now, I wanted to put plastic on the new windows that we put in this year. And I recently had a rug delivered to my home, and when I was cutting the plastic off, I seen that it was very see-through, very clear, and very strong and very durable. So I saved it to use for this project. I just cut it to fit, and then I went ahead and stapled it around the windows. And this is really going to block that wind. Now, on the inside, of course, I have R13 value in the upper rafters. And for the bottom walls... The bottom walls are double thick. They're a double wall. And you can see here in this vent, I stuffed it full of insulation for winter, but uh, it is a two by four. So there's a four inch space between the outside wall and this three quarter inch plywood that is on the inside. And some of those places are insulated and where it's not, it's a four inch dead air space. So that really helps insulate as well. And for my next project, I'm just reusing feed bags. Feed bags are so valuable. And what I did is I duct taped them together to make longer sheets. And then I stapled it up on that dividing wall between the ladies area and my area. And this is going to cut down the amount of space that needs warmed and block any extra breezes that come in from the front and uh, this is actually the same uh, bags that I used last year so I just had folded them up when I took them down the spring and I'm reusing them now you notice I didn't do anything with the door and that is because here in Michigan you know the weather varies a lot it can be 45 degree one day and 20 the next so I used this heavy drop cloth and I made some curtains so uh, I made them nice and thick so I can spread them or close them. And it really is going to block the air or provide great uh, ventilation for them. Now, in the nesting boxes, I am putting some straw. Straw is a great insulator. And overall, the ladies prefer it. And like I said before, don't get too fancy because they will definitely want to make it themselves their own way. This uh, Ruthie jumped up right away and got started building her nest. Now, I don't like straw on the floor because it gets wet and it holds a lot of moisture but um, it is great for the nesting boxes now as you can see I've made more curtains and I'm putting them over all the windows and they can be closed at night and open during the day to let the sun in to warm the coop or on a windy day they can be kept closed 
And I even put them at the door. Um, this really blocks a lot of wind coming in. Now, our door actually faces east, and we don't get a lot of wind from that direction. But when we do, we want to block it. I now want to talk about just a few other little things, details that are going to help keep your flock warmer. My chickens prefer a round branch. I had fancier ones in there and they did not like them. And I tried a branch. They roost outside in a tree, so they do like this branch. They can hold on in a more natural position and sit on their feet and keep them warmer. Now, I so strongly suggest investing in one of these little devices. This measures the indoor and the outdoor temperature. Now, this just came from the house. It's not really that warm in the coop right now. Trust me, it was like 36 outside. But this will measure so that you know uh, how warm it is where your chickens are. And, and that gives you the information you need to either do more things to button up the coop or provide more ventilation. I strongly suggest getting the one that measures humidity because that's very important. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now this part, it's a two-part device and this part actually goes outside and is in a protected area where it's not direct sunlight or rain and it gives you a, a clear reading. Now I want to talk about bag balm. I keep that in the coop and uh, when you touch it with your fingers it melts. If you don't want to use the mineral oil, you can certainly use coconut oil, but this clings much better. I use it on their combs and their waddles because we were talking about uh, humidity. When they're breathing, they're expelling water. Uh, if you have water in your coop, which I do not because of this reason, any water moisture in the air when it gets really cold, it will freeze and it will frostbite their little tender area. So this packs on there and protects the water from getting on their skin. Now, I don't use a heat lamp, but I have a standard 60-watt bulb, and I will turn this on for a few minutes before closing up the coop, and just that 60 watts will warm up the coop, and then when I go inside, the light goes off, and there's no danger of anything catching on fire, and a 60-watt bulb will put off a significant amount of heat. So, uh, I, if you have a smaller coop or your chickens can reach it, I strongly suggest putting a cage fixture around around it so no one can bump into it because a 60 watt is hot but it provides just enough heat now we're just going to recap putting uh, all the curtains over the windows the straw in the nesting boxes closing off my section and this has provided a lot of weatherization for the coop and the ladies are just well, everyone enjoying that it. is it for this video thanks so much for watching i hope that you learned some things that are going to help keep your coop closed up and warm for your flock if you have any questions or comments please leave them below please give it a like and subscribe ring the bell follow along everybody be safe be blessed we'll see you next time